All right, hey guys, what's going on? Side Home Theater Dude, got a brand new episode for today. As you know, I've been testing out a lot of the Emotiva products lately. Started out with the Emotiva RMC1, been testing that one out in the house lately. I tested out the Emotiva T1 Towers, and now I finally have my hands on the XMC2, a more budget-friendly version of the uh, RMC1. And I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing unboxed. I'm gonna talk about a couple of these specs about it, and I'll do it right after the intro. All right, so this thing's double boxed, which is uh, kind of a pain to get it out of the original box, but uh, cool thing is, comes with this little birth certificate. Also in there, you're going to have the owner's manual, which uh, seems to be, you know, pretty self-explanatory. If you guys haven't read the owner's manual, highly recommend it. It'll basically explain all the stuff that you guys don't necessarily know about, and it'll make this thing a whole lot easier to operate. Uh, besides that, it's basically saying, uh, sorry for not having uh, direct live yet, um, but it will be out very, very shortly. In the box, you have a microphone patch cable, a calibrated microphone. It's kind of cool, it has Emotiva right on there. A fancy remote, and this looks exactly the same as the remote that I have already. This is indeed, in fact, the exact same remote that comes with the RMC1, so they're not gonna skimp on that, they're actually gonna give you that same remote. You also get two accessory boxes. In accessory box one, you get the microphone stand to go with your calibrated microphone. You also get a USB, a FM and AM, or just an FM antenna. In accessory box two, you get your power cable as well as some goofy little batteries that uh, I've never seen until I actually saw the Emotiva RMC1 remote. So let's get into the meat and potatoes. You also get an AM antenna if you were ever wondering if they were gonna include that, which they did. Let's cut this off. So this is the unit. It's a whole lot smaller than the RMC1 that I'm used to. A whole lot lighter as well. Um, let's go ahead and check this thing out. All right, so here's the front of the unit. A little bit different than the RMC1. It has a single OLED display and the RMC1 has a two OLED display. This makes it a little bit simpler to actually have these um, function buttons uh, completely separate than the volume knob. If you try to move this up, down, left, and right, like you do with uh, the RMC1 or even a you know a fancy German car, it's just not happening. It's all it is is just a single volume knob and the haptic feedback on it. It's pretty good, um, small little knob, kind of like it. So down on the front, you're going to have your headphone jack. You're going to have your USB, so you can also use that as a, a servicing point. So if you need to update it, this thing doesn't update via the, the internet. Basically what you do is you get a USB, which is the same thing that was included in the unit, plug it in here, you go to one of the settings and you basically tell it to, to do a um, uh, factory update and then it does it that way as well. You also have your ability of an auxiliary cord. Here's your menu button, your standby button, and your dimmer. So if you guys don't like, <laughs> if you guys are not like me and you guys don't like uh, reflections and lights and all that stuff in, in, in the house, you wanna streamline it, make everything nice and dark, you guys can do that via this little function right here. It's a nice looking little unit. It's a three rack mount. Um, if you guys don't know, Emotiva actually sells rack mount ears. So it makes a lot of these things a breeze to install whenever you, whenever you actually want to put it in a rack mount. I think it's best, you know, uh, it's, it just makes everything nice and tidy, puts all the stuff in one spot. You never have to worry about it. But if you guys do want to have this thing front and center, it does have feet at the bottom. And, you know, you can put this in uh, your entertainment center or, you know, just something like that. I would highly recommend having this in an area that has something that's ventilated because, I mean, even though it's just a processor, there's no internal amplifiers in this. Units tend to get hot. I mean, obviously I don't have first-hand experience with it yet, but I'm guessing that this thing is, if, if, it, if it's anything like the RMC1, it gets a little bit hot. So just having a little bit of uh, assurance of having some ventilation is gonna help you out in the long run. 
All right, it wouldn't be a, uh, it wouldn't be a that home theater dude unboxing if we didn't check out the booty on this thing. So check out the back of it. You're gonna have H eight HDMIs on the back, two HDMI outputs. These are all the 4K, 18 gigabit, four x four x four, you know, all, all that jazz. You're gonna have all the HDCP 2.2, so let's go over a couple of the inputs. You have analog balanced inputs over here. You have uh, analog inputs as well. Interconnect digital out. You also have a toss link digital out. Um, you have some digital ins. Uh, you have that via RCA as well as toss link. You have an AES EBU. So if you guys are buying um, XLRs for this thing, which I'm sure you will be with down here, um, you don't necessarily need to spend the extra money to get an AES EBU. It's a completely different uh, impedance that basically sends a digital signal, which is why it's in the digital inputs. It sends a digital signal and these are uh, analog signals down here. So you don't necessarily have to worry about um, grabbing one of those, save your money, just grab some traditional XLR units and you should be fine. So here's your network in. I'm sure that you, you will be using this whenever the Direct Live becomes live on the actual unit. Um, it's gonna be available via uh, internet update. So that way, this one's gonna be, be able to actually verify um, and, and be able to do the Direct Live. You also have a USB, same thing as the front. So you have two USBs on this thing. So if you need to do um, you know, a, a powered HDMI output, you can also do that. Or if you need to do updates, you can do that in the front or back. You have your IR inputs. IR outputs and this thing has four triggers they're all programmable so I mean it's just a lot of the same stuff that you've seen in my videos of the RMC1 and then you have your 16 glorious outputs down here XLR outputs these are balanced outputs um, I would highly recommend not using the adapters for these I've, I, I've seen them I've seen it done and it doesn't make sense if you're gonna be spending the big bucks on this thing this thing isn't cheap by any means $3,000 if you're gonna be spending that kind of money why would you uh, you know grab um, adapters for your um, main speakers. The only reason why I would say to do an adapter is that if you have a subwoofer that doesn't necessarily have an XLR input or balanced input, then it makes it easier for you just to use it just for that specific purpose. But for overall sound, I wouldn't recommend using those adapters. And I haven't said adapters enough, so I'm gonna say it again, adapters. <laughs> Over here you have your power, power input. That's about it. So let's go ahead and compare this thing to the RMC1. All right, so from here, they look pretty similar. The RMC1 is up top, the XMC2 is down below. Um, the differences in between these units is the uh, difference in size. This is a three RU rack mount, four RU rack mount, and this is 16 channels flat out. This is 16 channels expandable, four modules at a time. And also with, you know, phono stages and, uh, you know, analog and, uh, different, different type of inputs like that. Um, these are going to be, if, if, you, if you guys want a little bit of explanation about this, about the expansion modules, uh, go ahead and check out my video on the RMC1 and I'll basically give you guys all the information that you need on those actual expansion modules. So I keep saying expansion and there's a reason that I keep saying that. The reason why I'm saying it is that with this unit up top, the RMC1, you know, as time progresses, different things gonna come out. So right now we're at 4K. Pretty soon we're probably gonna be at 8K, which I don't understand how that's even fathomable with uh, with a streaming device. Um, but uh, with 8K media, these boards up here are 4K, 4x4x4, 18 gigabit, you know, whenever HDMI 2.1 becomes the new standard, these are actually gonna be upgradable um, to the uh, new standard. So I think that's pretty cool. Down here, I'm not sure if these are gonna be upgradable or not, but I mean, that's the reason why I keep saying expandable and upgradable for this unit up top. So if you wanna save a couple thousand dollars, this is $5,000, this right here is $3,000. If you have no no uh, ability or no, no space or no um, reservations of ever increasing your speaker amount, then I would highly recommend going with this one. It has all the goodies that this one has. It's just smaller and it only has the um, differential on the front stage. So all of these are gonna be fully differential on each individual channel and uh, just the front stage on this is gonna be fully differential. So, I mean, there may or may not be a difference in sound. I will test both of these at the same time doing a complete blind test for you guys. And that's coming up a little bit later on. But uh, just for now, I wanted to show you guys the back of these. Pretty similar. Um, it pretty much looks like there is an extra digital input set. Yeah, that's basically about it. Um, <laughs> these units are remarkably similar. Let's go ahead and flip this thing around to the front and show you guys the differences. All right, so on the front of the unit, like I was just talking about, the differences in between the RMC1 and the XMC2 is basically gonna be the in, determined in the size and also the front screen. So as I was talking about, these have directional buttons that basically uses the, that basically controls the direction on, at the same time. Over here, you have your volume knob and then you have your volume knob 
with the actual directional buttons. Same thing with your standby button. You know, the only difference is, is if you have a menu, you have a dedicated menu button and you have the uh, dimming button right there, right on the front for you guys. So if you don't wanna necessarily fumble around with your remote or find it, then that's the way to do it as well. But that's it guys, pretty much the same thing uh, from, from both of these, no internal amplifiers, uh, 16 channel processors. They, ba they basically have the same DACs in them and uh, that's about it. So you guys know my, my take on the RMC1. Um, is the R XMC2 gonna live up to the hype? So we're gonna find out, is it worth saving $2,000? So that basically wraps up the unboxing of the Emotiva XMC2. If you guys want to purchase this, just go ahead and hit me down in the description. I'm going to go ahead and leave links to both of these processors down there. And if you guys like, just go ahead and scoop one up. Um, if you haven't already, make sure you like, favorite, share, and subscribe. And I'll catch you on the next video.